Okay, my name is Bruce Solomon, and we're at the Veterans Center of St. George. We're an affiliate of the Veterans Administration, and our mission is working with combat veterans and people who have been deployed in combat zones all the way back to the Revolutionary War, but we don't get very many of those in. So we're primarily dealing now with the vestiges of the Korean War, the Vietnam War, and these young men and women coming back from the Middle East. We're located here in the Dixie Commons of St. George, and we've been here for about 18 months, and I've been here myself about 13 months. We originally bought a home here in 1999, and the idea was to retire. We'd had a, a corporation, we ran it out of Salt Lake City. It became an international. We had offices even in the Republic of China. But we had decided we would like to retire in St. George, so we bought the home. But unfortunately, my wife would rather stay with the grandchildren. She'd rather have them closer than 400 miles. And the truth of the matter really is I, I couldn't retire. I work as a counselor now of combat vets. I am a combat veteran. I spent 17 months in the jungles of Vietnam with a Marine rifle outfit. So I had developed the same kind of things I'm treating people now for, PTSD and, and all of its fun and games, the gift that goes on giving. And I needed my work to escape the throes. I, I threw all of my focus and attention into my work. It allowed me to occupy myself. It prevented me from having to go to social events that were uncomfortable for me and do events that I didn't want to do because of the disorder. When I finally did retire in 2007, that's when Vietnam came up for me. I had too much time to think. My children had asked me to write my stories so that my progeny, my grandchildren, great-grandchildren, whatever, would know who Bruce Solomon was. And uh, as I started to write those, and I got to the year when I was 18, joined the Marine Corps, that night I had my first nightmare in 27 months. And that nightmare before that was 15 years. Something had triggered that. But then it became a nightly event. I stopped sleeping, and I, I sleep fitfully, if at all. Depressed, generally adding up the total of the years, adding up the columns and coming down to the bottom and finding out that I had this 17-month uh, period that I could find no salvation in. And I could find no justification for it. And that's when PTSD got me, and within a few months I was pondering suicide. I no longer felt vital, I no longer felt like I was needed in the world, and um, it was just too hard to live with this constant turmoil. So we got me into treatment. My wife had been with me through all of this. We married before I went to Vietnam, a wonderful woman. And she saw me through some very difficult times and spent her whole life with me, and she asked me to go in for treatment. She said, would you go one more time? And I had gone to the VA in 1969 asking for assistance. And they told me that all they have is medication. And that scared me away. I didn't want to be sedated. And so I struggled through it with her help. We started this mom and pop operation and in 30 years turned it into an international. And so she says, please, one more try. Please go to the VA one more time. And so I did go to the VA. They asked me if I thought about suicide and I said, I don't think about it anymore. And the worker said, well, why? And I said, because I've already decided. She says, do you have a date? And I said, day after tomorrow. And she says, when did you decide that? And I said, about six weeks ago. And I'm just finishing up things. And my plan was to slide my motorcycle off of an edge above the reservoir and end it. And so I went into six months of heavy intensive treatment, went into the vocal rehab program, vocational rehabilitation program. They paid for graduate school at the University of, Social, uh, of Utah Social Work, Department of Social Work. And I came down here uh, 30 days after graduation as a clinical therapist working with combat veterans. That's what brought me to St. George.
Well, from my perspective, uh, one of the good things that came out of the Vietnam War was the, the Vet Center. The Center is a concept that was put together by Vietnam veterans. And the mission of the Vet Center is to take the care to the veteran, to do everything we can to reintegrate them into their life, to rehabilitate their disorders if we can, to teach them management of it. Unfortunately, PTSD is one of those things that will be with you forever because it's a, it's a primal development. I mean, your life depends on the response, how you respond and how you do things. And so it goes in at a very primal level and it, and it remains with you. It's not something you switch off. And so we can teach them to manage it in that they get ahead of the beast, if you will, instead of being drugged behind it. And by doing that, and in doing that, the way we do that is to, we have the opportunity to work not only with the veteran, but with their wife, with their partner, with their children, with their siblings, with their parents. We can do group sessions of the entire group, or we can work with any of those people individually, so that we have an opportunity to explain to them that some of the reactive behavior attendant to PTSD is based on this life or death reckoning, based on this I've got to do this to stay alive. Um, an example might be a child who's reaching out for a plug, a wall plug. The veteran notices the child doing that. The veteran goes right to threat. His threat alert goes off and he says, don't touch the plug, stay away from that. The voice is elevated, the emotion is there, the child thinks he's being yelled at, the chi child gets emotional. The wife in the other room hears that and says, can't you be a little more gentle with the kid? But rather than actually being abrupt and being rough with the kid, he was what was piqued was his fear and regard for the child. The kid's life's in danger. And so he reacted rather than responded. So what we attempt to do is to work with the entire familial unit so that they understand that reactive behavior is different than intentional behavior and at the same time bring the awareness to the veteran themselves so that they can begin to uh, monitor the, the level of alarm and begin to be aware of self from a response rather than reactive basis. So I'm a uh, readjustment counselor. I readjust the entire shoot and mess.